Hi everybody, my name is Mr. C and I'm so excited to be here with all of you today. Today we are going to talk about wait for it, wait for it, weights and measures. Weights and measures, what does that even mean? Hmm, not quite sure, but together we're gonna figure this out. In fact, actually, we do know what it means because weights is just what it sounds like. Things can be measured by their weights. And if things are being talked about, we can say something weighs 10 pounds, weighs 10 kilograms. 10 pounds and 10 kilograms, are those the same things? No, they're not. So we have to understand what they mean and how things balance out. And when it comes to measurement, well, we all know what measurement it is. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we all know what measurement is. It's a way that we are able to actually measure something. For example, we've got a ruler here. This is a ruler. A ruler has 12 inches. It's a universal, it's upside down. A ruler has 12 inches. It's universal. So if I say something is seven inches long, then we can measure it and compare and make sure that it's actually seven inches long. A ruler also has, I think it's 30 centimeters. There we go. Now it's right side up, 30 centimeters. So we know that 30 centimeters equals 12 inches. A ruler comes in handy when we want to measure things, whether it's an index card that might be five inches by eight inches, or if we want to measure my hair, I'm not sure how many inches that is tall, but it's, I'm gonna say it's right about there. Two inches tall. Oh, that's not long enough. We've got to work on that. So a ruler can be used to measure a whole bunch of different things. And then if a ruler isn't big enough, guess what we have? This is a meter stick. A meter stick has 100 centimeters in it. Yeah, and a meter stick has 39 inches in it. So it's much, much longer. So if we're measuring bigger things, we need a bigger measuring tool. But what if that's not big enough? What do we use? Tape measure. It can get super long. Let's see how long my arm span is. It probably goes off the camera. Ugh. It is approximately, let's, I clicked it down, 66 inches. About. That's almost about as tall as I am. My wingspan is almost as long as I am tall. I'm 73 inches tall. I'm six foot one inch, 73 inches, yeah. So we can use measurement to do all sorts of cool things. So we measure distance. That's one of the things we measure. We also measure time. Time is another big thing that we measure all the time. We measure time all the time, all the time that we measure time. And think about it, like your birthday, right? How many days is it to your next birthday? 365 days, that's right. Uh, how far away or how long of a drive is it to school if you drive? Is it 15 minutes? Is it 20 minutes? That is using time to measure how long you are in that car. Or what if you walk to school? Is it a 10 minute walk? Is it a 20 minute walk? Is it a half an hour walk? We can measure time also. Then we have, so we have distance, we have time, we have this thing called mass. So how much of a substance there is, mass, and we use different things to measure mass. For example, I have a digital scale here that can measure up to five kilograms or 5,000 grams. So this can measure up to five kilograms of mass. And what's cool about that is I can put anything on it and I can tell you how much mass there is. You wanna try it? I think we should. So I turned it on. It says, hello. I'm gonna turn it sideways so, um, let's see here. Uh-oh. Hello. Okay. So I have some candy right here but it's in this jar, right? So I have to dump the candy out because we don't want to measure the jar. So the jar itself is 71 grams. And I'm going to hit this little button that says tear. And what that means is it's going to make this back to zero. So now when I measure how much my Skittles weigh, they weigh 56 grams. Skittles, 56 grams. Now I can take that out, I can dump that out. I can put that back on there. 
I'm gonna hit tear to make sure it starts at zero. And I have these chocolate chip morsels, these little chocolate chips, because we're gonna bake some cookies and we need to be able to measure out certain amounts of chocolate. So I'm gonna pour those in there, try to. And that is 59 grams. So this amount of chocolate is almost exactly equal to this amount of Skittles. So we can use a scale, we can use a scale to compare and measure things to see if they have the same amount of substance. I love to do science shows. I love to do all sorts of really cool stuff. And one of the things I love to do is help kids learn new scientific concepts. And sometimes when I'm doing science shows, I have to measure things in order to make sure that the experiments work properly and that I'm being safe. So for example, here's a really cool experiment I did once. I took boiling water and I dumped it into liquid nitrogen. And I had to measure out the two so that I could get a pretty specific reaction to happen on stage. Check this out. All right, here we go. Inside of this container, I have liquid nitrogen that's been cooled and condensed. And it does this. That liquid nitrogen, you know what, that's awesome. I can still see some of the little liquid bubbles moving around on the stage, but it's turning into a gas because it's going from a liquid to a gas. It's going through a phase change right now. Oh, I got an idea, I got an idea. Let's pour a whole bunch in here. Whee! All right. So I have a question. Minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. What if, what if we add some boiling water to that? Should we give it a try? Boiling water is 300, excuse me, I got the numbers mixed up. Boiling water, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Liquid nitrogen, minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. Do the math, the difference, over 500 degrees. I need a countdown in three, two, one. Another example is when I'm actually building bottle xylophones. Depending on how much water I put into the bottle determines the sound of the bottle. Here, check out this really cool little experiment I did. I actually did a Christmas tune uh, this past year and I want you to hear the song and you can see that each of the bottles has different amounts of water in it, which causes different notes, which causes a different pitch. So measuring that water is essential to be able to play this awesome tune. So those are just two examples of how I use science to measure things out to make sure that my experiments behave a certain way. Now, when you're at home, you're doing experiments like cooking and baking, you have to measure things out, right? Or when your teacher asks you to do a science project in class, you have to measure things out. It might be mass, it might be distance, it might be volume, how much liquid there is. These are different things that you might have to actually measure when doing experiments on your own. But here's the thing, everything around us has mass, right? Everything. So if I take this balloon and I hold it here, you can see that this balloon is not inflated, but I can inflate the balloon and I can tie it. And this balloon, oh, I should have met. I should have measured how heavy the, oh, hold on. Got another balloon. We're gonna assume these are about the same. So I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna put the balloon on it. It weighs three grams, okay? 
Now this is full of air and let's see what it weighs. Three grams. <laughs> okay, let's blow, let's blow it up really big. Oh, I thought it was gonna pop. All right. <laughs> All right, so here I'm gonna make sure it's, I'm gonna put this on here, turn it back on, showing zero grams. It's still showing three grams. So it makes me wonder, does air actually have mass? Like it's coming back to the same exact measurement. But here's the thing, this scale only goes, it's not very accurate, right? Let me see if I can, ounces, pounds, no. So my grams, I can't get anything smaller than a gram, but balloons have to have mass if there's air inside of it, right? There, It has to weigh something. I think we're gonna have to ask one of my friends, Sven, to explain and illustrate how a balloon actually has mass in it to actually prove that the air weighs something. Because can this balloon actually be the same mass as this? When it looks like there's probably two, two and a half times the amount of air inside of it, it, it can't be equal. So my scale has to be off a little bit. All right, let's see what Sven has to say and see if he can help us better understand air and whether it actually has mass. Yeah, Mr. C, where are you? You're supposed to be here at the gym getting buff today. Yeah, Sven loves your music. It helps everybody in the world learn the new things, but you have to build your other muscles too, you know? Of course I will help you. I know everything there is to know about mass. Kinder, I'm going to pump up your brain and use these balloons to show you how air has mass. I made a video. You want to watch it? It shows you how disinflatable bench press actually works. These two balloons are balanced, which means they have the same mass. If I take and cut a hole in one of them, the air escapes and the other balloon tips down. That's because it has air inside and air has mass. And you can see that in this experiment. If I want to get more buff, I simply add more weight. The mass. What'd you think? What did you think? So did Sven's experiment with the balance actually prove to you that air has mass? Yeah, it does. And going back to this scale here, it's just a reminder that certain scales measure things more accurately than other scales. So when you're actually measuring your weight in the bathroom or you're measuring your weight at the doctor's office, they use different scales. And the more accurate the scale, the more accurate the measurement. So when you're doing measurements, it's important that you have accurate tools. So air has mass. Air takes up space, which is called volume. And we could technically measure the circumference, the distance around the balloon also. And it is 31, is that inches? Yeah, 31 inches as a circumference of 31 inches. It's a pretty big balloon right there. All right, I've got an experiment that I want you to actually participate with me here. We're going to kind of move some of these things out of the way because, well, you remember when I said that these two are almost the same? Well, there's another way I can compare those things and that is using a little balance. Look at this little balance. Oh, isn't that cute? So I have this balance and this beam here is like a big lever. And this point right here where the little needle is, that is the fulcrum. That's where all the mass of this is sitting. And that's where it's balanced at right now. If I take off one of these, 
you can see that this side goes down. So you've been at a play park before, and at play parks, they typically have these toys called seesaws. And this is sort of like a seesaw. You can put mass on one side, one Skittle, I can put another one on the other side. And because they're the same, it'll come back to balance. It's at equilibrium. Equilibrium. <laughs> it's at equilibrium. Now, what's really cool about this, it's static, it's not moving, right? So we're not pushing up and down, we're just kind of floating there on the seesaw. So if I weigh twice as much as my friend, it's gonna come back down. But if he gains a lot of weight while we're on the seesaw, and now we're the same weight, we have the same mass, boom. We're like that. Now, you can actually build one of these yourself, and that's what we're going to do right now. Because you might not have a seesaw in your house, you might not have a seesaw in your neighborhood, but we're going to actually use some really simple, simple tools to build our own little balance. Now I'm gonna show you when I built a different version of this. I had some Legos sitting around. So I worked to build a scale. There we go. So I built a Lego scale, which works also. It's a little finicky, but it, it's, it works. So I can take a sugar cube. I can put it onto this side and it, and it goes down. Now, when I put it on this side, it doesn't want to pull the scale upwards. So I have to give it some help to give it a start, but it does balance itself. It usually balances itself out but the Legos seem to be really finicky, but you can see that they're balanced. Um, if I put another one, you can see that it actually does move like that. And I would need two sugar cubes on this side now to balance it out again so that our system is at equilibrium. Because no matter if I put it here, if I try to put it here, it's going to want to go down, right? No matter what I do. So if you have Legos, you can build your own balance to measure different things at your house. But if you don't have Legos, I've got a great alternative for you. And we're gonna build this right now. So I have the stand. I'm gonna sit right here. You don't have to have a stand like this. I'm only using this so that I can keep talking to you and engaging with you. You're gonna need a coat hanger all right, so a coat hanger is just like our scale. I'll bring this back over, dump out our Skittles. So our coat hanger is just like our little scale here. But what we need now are baskets in order for us to be able to measure mass and compare things to see if they're balanced or not balanced. So what we're gonna need are a couple of materials. So. You don't have to have a hole punch, but it might be helpful. I've got some plastic cups. I have a plastic cup. Now I have another plastic cup. Okay, they're the same size. All right, so I have two plastic cups. I've got these two paper clips. All right, they're gonna be, we're gonna, oh, look at that. So this was already at balance, right? So here's the pivot point in the mass, center of mass, it's here in the center. So the moment I tr add this to the side, it tips, just like our scale. If we add mass to one side and not the other, it tips, right? So now what we have to do is we have to bring this to the other side and get it balanced. Once again, we are balanced and ready to roll. And now what we need to do is we need to actually connect this to our cups. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we are going to take a whole punch. Actually, hey, bonus cup. What we're going to do is I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut off the lip of this because it's hard to get around. So I'm gonna come down here and to make sure that they're the same, there's this groove right here. I'm just gonna cut this, maybe. Ooh, it's actually pretty tough. All right, I need some heavy duty scissors. All right, so I got my heavier. All right, that was intense. 
So I'm going to still use this cup. Hopefully it'll still work. I'm going to cut it right on that seam. We'll see if that works. And I'm going to cut one more. Now if you're cutting these, you don't have to use these hard plastic cups. You can use paper cups, styrofoam cups. I'm only using these so that you can see through to see what we're actually measuring. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna poke, punch a hole in it. I'm gonna punch a hole in this one, about the same distance. And then I'm going to connect this one here. Cool. We're almost there. And now we have a balanced scale. All right, so we have our whole system and I'm gonna move some things out of the way so that we have plenty of space to work and to actually measure and to see if things can be balanced. I'm really excited about this to see if our little measuring system works. So just so you know what these are, these are like little plastic uh, weights. They are each 10 grams, and we're going to use them to actually determine what some of our candy weighs, right? So if I have 10 grams in here, you can see it swings up. If I put 10 grams over here, here in a second, it'll balance itself out, hopefully. And you can actually hang your balance on like a doorknob like back here you could hang it in your kitchen you could hang it on a doorknob to your bedroom it just depends so i'm going to just slow it down so that it's not swinging as much so we can see that those two things are balanced so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take one out and i'm going to count how many chocolate morsels it takes to get 10 grams Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're getting closer. It's really wobbly. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We're almost there. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That looks pretty level. It'll come to It'll come to rest itself. I would say that's pretty level. Now this cup is hanging down more than this cup, but we're looking here at the beam to see if it's straight. All right, so I think that's pretty level. Now you can take that. So now we know that 10 grams is 20 pieces of chocolate chips. So each one of those pieces of chocolate chips is equal to a half a gram. So now we can actually use that to do some other math and try to figure things out. So for example, we know that this is 10 grams, right? That's how many pieces of chocolate we have. I have a dipping sauce from the store. We got some chicken nuggets the other night and I got some buffalo sauce and I'm gonna put this in here. Whoa. Now the buffalo sauce on the packet says 21 grams. So if this was 10 grams in order to balance this now, I would need to add another 20, at least 20, right? So we're gonna do five at a time. So this is 25, 30, 35, 40. So that's 40 grams. It's still not level, you can see that. So it's saying that if there's one more gram, so that'd be two more morsels. Well, let's see if we can get it to stop wiggling. That's really close. I still think this side is up a little bit. So I have 44 pieces of chocolate to one packet of buffalo sauce. Cool. 
I'm gonna get some marshmallows. So, I'm gonna dump this out. What's nice about the cups is you can just literally dump it out super easily, hook it back on, and keep exploring. So I have marshmallows, one of my favorite treats for science. You can do a lot with marshmallows. So, we have one marshmallow. I'm just gonna compare it to one of these 10 grams really, actually, yeah. Put that in there. Well, that's really close to being balanced, I would say. So one marshmallow is close to 10 grams. All right, let's see how many sugar cubes equals a marshmallow. Did that even change? like it's close to being balanced maybe I think so so one marshmallow is close to two sugar cubes so each sugar cube is roughly five grams so you can have a lot of fun but here's the thing we're not talking universal measurements right now so for example no you're not going to say in a recipe if it's calling for you know 100 grams of marshmallows it's not going to say you need what would that be 10 20 sugar cubes of marshmallows right so we are doing measurements and comparing masses of things in a non-standard unit so grams is standard everyone understands grams um, here in america we use things called ounces right so we can compare ounces to grams when we're talking measurement like this one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters so if we want to convert that, we can. But in order to communicate time, measurement, mass, volume, we have to be able to communicate the same way. So now we've actually built a system that allows us to measure mass and compare different objects. But I think we should take this knowledge of weights and measures and actually apply it to something really cool like a sculpture. All right, let's get this cleaned up and let's do that activity next. So what we're gonna do is build a sculpture with things that I have at my house. I'm not sure which of these things are actually going to work just yet, but we're gonna figure it out and we're going to try to build a balanced sculpture <laughs> with these things. Now, one of the things that I have that I'm gonna start with is this carrot. So as you can see, a carrot does not stand up by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this idea of that fulcrum, that point where all the weight was on the scale and we're gonna turn this carrot into a self-balancing carrot, hopefully. So this is a system, just like the scale, that we're going to use to try to get everything to balance. We want it to be at equilibrium. So we're gonna to have to figure out ways to balance it. And this carrot, I'm gonna try this carrot, because it looks a little more uniform on the tip. I think we could probably get this one to work too, but. We're gonna try this one. All right, so I've got this. Let's see if I can, so nope, it's not balancing. I'm gonna start with these fruit snacks. Put a fruit snack on the end. Try to get two fruit snacks that are the same. Let's see what we got here. Oh, look. So it's tipped a little bit this way. So what I can do is I can try to figure out how to change that. Just like my scale, I need more mass over here. Or what if I shift this fruit snack in a little bit? No, still the same. Maybe I just need another fruit snack on this side. Let's see what it does. <laughs> so half the fun is getting this to balance the first time, right? So it's not perfect, but I'm gonna roll with it. 
All right, so now I'm gonna try another skewer on this side. I've got some smaller skewers. And look, that itself causes the system to bend a little bit. I'm gonna take a half a marshmallow. It still balances. I mean, it's not perfect balance, but how cool is that? All right, what else can we do? I've got more fruit snacks. What about a balloon? We know that balloon with air in it has mass, right? <sighs> Tie it off. I don't want it too big. Question is, oh, I don't know what this is gonna do. Every time you add something, so that, if I put this on here, it's gonna, well, we're just gonna find out. Oh, I need tape. Did I get tape? I need tape. Oh, tape. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this closer. Static, static. All right, that's two, is it floating? No. All right, so we need more marshmallows on this side to balance that out. <laughs> that's so cool. All right, um, let's see. I'm gonna take one of these, these soda bottle lids. I'll have to, actually I'm gonna put a marshmallow on the inside of it, like that. And that way I can just put a skewer through it. See what oh, it's sticky. <gasps> I just split my carrot. Uh oh. All right, I just split my carrot. I don't know if I can add that to it or not. All right, we're gonna try a smaller skewer again. I've got these little these lids have these blue things in them. I'm just gonna put a hole through there. Just kinda like put it up here, see what it does. I don't know, I think that looks really cool. And what's cool is because it's balancing on that little part right there, in theory, I should be able to spin it. Oh, that is awesome. So weights and measures. You know, we've talked about grams, we've talked about inches and centimeters, we've talked about measuring, we've talked about all these different things, and we've just touched and scratched the surface. There are so many things that you can do at your house to measure, whether you build your own scale and you decide to measure and then compare different masses of different foods in your house, or if you wanna use a digital scale, you can do that as well or if you wanna measure time to see how long it takes to actually build something like this, or if you measure how far it is to drive to the store to get your carrots and marshmallows and balloons and skewer sticks. These are all different types of measurements because measurements are all around us. So I hope you had a lot of fun today exploring this. I know I use measurement in my day, in my life, each and every day. Each and every day I use measurement in some form, whether it's the moment I wake up, the moment I start to eat, the moment I start to exercise, the moment I start to read, I'm using measurement different ways all the time. So let us know how you use measurement and I hope you love some of the experiments that we've done today. Take care, have fun, keep learning. And uh, yeah, before you know it, your entire life will be balanced right in front of you. All right, take care guys, bye.